In today's episode, we're going to be talking about classroom display and classroom boards. Today, I'm going to open the door of my classroom so that you will see what all my classroom display is and what my classroom boards look like. The very first thing you need to do is to ensure that there's a good start right from the door. The children need to see that you are welcoming them into the classroom. Over here, you can see that their names are written there, welcoming them, letting them know that this class belongs to them. I'm also going to be showing you how I cut and do my display. I'm going to show you all the tools that you need. Now, you know that when you are doing the classroom display, you need to have your children in mind. You need to have a goal. What are the things I want my children to see on first day of school? What are the things I want my children to have at the back of their mind? What are the things I want to reiterate to my children when they're coming? This and many more will determine the kind of boards that you have. I want you to come with me on this journey as I open up my door and I want you to see what a classroom board display looks like. Let's go in. All right, I told you that I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use in the classroom when I'm doing my display. Now, the very first thing you need to have is the staple gun. We usually call it a gun because we use it for the board. So you need a staple gun. I always use my thumbtack. I have different kinds of scissors, two different kinds of scissors. I have a smooth one. And I have the one that is a jagged edge. You need your pencil, you need your crayon, you need your marker, and some colored crayons also. Sometimes, depending on what I'm doing, I need a fishing line. And don't forget your U glue, very important. And the last thing you need, you need your papers. You need the papers because that's how you're going to use to cut your stencil. You need to use it to cut your stencil. So I'm going to show you what I do right now. And I'm going to cut the letter stencil. You need to have it doubled that way you can place it on each other and they come out looking very nice So I have my stencil that I can use like this. Now I'm going to do a flower pot because I want to do my classroom board where I'm going to be teaching the children fiction and non-fiction words. Thank you. 
this is the base of my pot where I'm going to be doing something very unique. Now I need my macro to trace the edges. This is my finished flower pot. Wait until you see the full view of what I want to do, talking about fiction and non-fiction. This is the board I use for fiction and non-fiction. It's that pot that I cut. So what I do is after cutting the pot, I have the stem and then the leaves. I printed the words laminate them and put them on each leaves. then during teaching when it's time for activities with the children i scatter it on the floor and let them take it one after the other and put it in the right place so they are able to identify which one is fiction and which one is non-fiction and then they're able to also identify which one is common to both a nice activity for teaching this is my board this is a popcorn stand that i've created and i would like you to see you know children like things popping up and what you have to do is get the red and white paper and cut it and make it a bit bigger and the popcorn you can use the yellow you can use white make sure the background and the border that you use make sure that they all coordinate themselves it cannot piece in the classroom very necessary for decorations and you can use this point um, to teach the sun you can use it to teach rhyme when you're talking about Incy wincy spider, you know that rhyme? You can use this for that. Awesome. Colors and shapes are good for your classroom decoration, especially for the preschoolers. To my right are colors decorated in cartoon form. You can see with the eyes, with the nose, with the mouth, and with the hands touching each other. And even use this to do social distancing for them in the classroom and to my left their shapes and colors are even included in them while teaching you can use this to reinforce your children with heart rectangle cone cube square and the likes of them this is a selling point in your class for preschooler it will help them when you are teaching shapes and colors Birthdays are an amazing time for children and they look forward to their birthdays every time they do birthdays. Mm -hmm. So here I use a gift box and a gift wrap just to celebrate the children in the class. You need to be celebrated yourself. So ensure that your picture is also on there and make sure that the date for each child is put there and their pictures at the side. If you don't have a picture, you can put their names. It's all right. But this is an amazing classroom decoration. This is another type of birthday that you can use in the classroom. There are a lot of um, things you can download on the internet. Download them, cut them out, laminate them so that it can last longer and put them around. The way you arrange them also matters. Ensure that you make, ensure that the children are all well represented on each month you can use pictures if you don't have their pictures just simply type their names in a piece of paper and stick it to their month make sure that you celebrate these children when the birthday time comes around make it something that is glamorous in your class have little display of birthdays all around but the basic thing is that on the wall you have this there to remind you when is each child's birthday. Put the date and put the month. I have the pink words here. 
it's, it's a board that I know that I'm going to be using throughout the term, helping the children learn how to read. Sight words are very essential. And now you see the other sight word, this board that you're looking at. This part of the board is the board where the words that we have used this week, I'll put them on the board. So this is a general one, while I also have the ones that we do every week. So sight words board is very, very key in the nursery class. Meanwhile, in the premise section, it's also key. You can put spelling words there. So every week the words are changed and use it in every activity you go on in the classroom. You can use them. You can refer to them. You can call any child at any time to use one of the words in a sentence and it reminds them of the spelling. We need a board. You need this kind of board. Literacy on one side, numeracy on the other side. It could also be French and science. It could be reading and mathematics. It could be anything. You need a wide board like this that can be demarcated into two. And the children's work will be placed on this board. So you put little, little piece of paper, A4 size, so that whatever worksheet that they've done in the classroom, I'll pin it up there and the children can see it and retreat to them. It also helps them to know their progress. This is especially good for the older children because they can see their mark. They can see the mark that other children in the class are having and it will help them in improving their next task that they will do in the class. But for the nursery, you don't really need that. When you have their work done, just display it. The children love to see what they have done in the classroom. So you need a board like this that can have literacy and numeracy. This is my reading board. This is a place where I am going to um, put all the reading materials that the children are going to be using throughout the term. But when they are coming into the school for the first time, I always just do a board to welcome them. Now this particular board, look who got caught reading. I saw it on the internet and I decided to adapt it for myself. Now what I did is I took a picture, I called the parents, they took a picture of the children reading at home at their own leisure time and they sent it to me, I printed it and gave it a border and then I used it to decorate my board and then I saw look who got caught reading. This way when the children come into the classroom, they can see that they, this is the picture they took during the holiday and they know that this board is for reading. So every reading material I'm going to give them throughout the term will be on this board. I'm just going to be changing the picture and changing every other thing, but the board remains the same. In your story corner, ensure that you have the title up there and make sure that your border also is distinct and beautiful it's a corner that children will love to look at every time and this there are pictures that you can use for every story once you have another story that is coming up for example goldilocks and the three bears you can just remove the three little pigs that is there and put goldilocks there so you keep changing and the children are wondering what story is coming up next time for story corner the children are gathered around here and you can use this as point of reference for every time you do a story one of the things you also need in your classroom is a board that has targets help the children set a target for themselves they need to have a goal what are the things that they want to achieve this school term they should have something to say for themselves and you give each child a box write their names on it they can decorate it themselves if they are older children if they are the younger ones then you can have it like this and you ask them for their target for the term and then it, it's there it serves as a reference point for them when they are doing something that is totally outside of their target you can always refer them 
to check what they have set, the goal that they have set for themselves at the beginning of the term. And it will help them channel their behavior, channel their learning to the right thing. Right, every teacher needs a corner piece where your information will be. Every school information, your timetable, your all the things that you need that a quick reminder you need a board like this that will remind you that will be just by your table and you need to have something in your background where when you're doing what i do is when i'm doing zoom this is what my children will see if i'm not using a virtual background so my corner has to be very neat and very tidy every teacher needs your corner piece board where you would put your own personal information at your fingertips. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you for staying with me on this journey and I hope you have learned a thing or two. And I hope you have seen the way my board is and my classroom display are. Is there something that you have done that is better than this? Put it in the comment section below. Let me say it. Even if you can copy some of the things I've done, it doesn't really matter. I want to appreciate you for staying this long. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's something good coming out your way very soon. From Deeds Library, this is Deola Adu saying bye.